The dust is yet to settle on the controversy trailing the signing into law of the Company and Allied Matters Act, Kama, by President Muhammad Buhari on the 7th of August. While some see the act as the most significant business legislation in 30 years, some have condemned the move by even threatening to sue the federal government. Joining us to throw more light on the act is the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Public Affairs, Ajuri Ngilali. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning to you, my dear brother. Good morning to our viewers. Thank you for having me. We hear the president's signing into law of the uh, Kama Act. Uh, let's uh, understand what this means for the average business person in Nigeria. Uh, absolutely. Thank you very much. So uh, essentially what uh, the, the amendment of the Companies and Allied Matters Act uh, has done uh, is that, of course, this deepens uh, the extensive work that President Muhammadu Buhari has been doing over the past five years in terms of easing the process of doing business in the country. Um, first of all, uh, in real terms, very specifically now, uh, the Kama Amendment will serve to uh, reduce the filing charges and business registration fees uh, for upstarting uh, MSMEs uh, in the country by up to 65% within the Corporate Affairs Commission. Secondarily, uh, you will see an additional level of financial savings uh, with the removal of the mandate uh, that required, uh, you know, those registering businesses to obtain uh, the services of lawyers and notary publics uh, to, for attestation to their statements of compliance. Now that has now been removed uh, so that, uh, you know, those registering businesses can attest to their own statements of compliance uh, without having to uh, you know, pay between 20,000 Naira and 200,000 Naira, depending on the lawyers uh, that you're dealing with uh, for that attestation. And then thirdly, uh, aside from the financial savings that has been, uh, you know, put in place uh, for many of the startup MSMEs in the country that will register their business, there's also the issue of time lag and efficiency. So we've introduced the issue of single directorship of companies so that those uh, who want to independently register their companies because the services they're providing are predominantly offered by them, uh, do not have to now go around looking for friends and family members who ordinarily would not be involved in the enterprise uh, to sit on a board of directors. Uh, they can do that themselves. And then finally, and very importantly, uh, the president also was able to put in place uh, an anti-corruption uh, instrument uh, that now ensures that uh, anybody registering a business is mandated to declare uh, those who are the beneficial owners of the shares of, of any companies being registered, and that if those who are registering the business are not the beneficial owners, they must now uh, openly declare those who nominated them uh, to sit uh, on the, uh, uh, the board of directors or whatever the case may be, of that company. And we know that this is important because of the trillions of naira that have been lost to government corruption through use of these kinds of uh, right. front-end uh, operation. Okay, and, and let's also understand what the controversy is about the plan to interfere in religious matters. Y yes, please. I think even the framing uh, of the conversation uh, that, uh, that this is a plan to interfere in religious matters up front is a falsehood uh, because this is not uh, an exclusive uh, measure to deal with religious institutions. It's not. It's, some people have even tried to zero it down to the, the Christian faith to say that this is an attempt uh, by, by government to somehow Islamize the country and uh, attack the Christian church and all of that. The reality of the matter is uh, any, any uh, non-government uh, uh, or profit uh, or non-profit charity, uh, charitable organization, had already registered uh, with Kama under Kama Part C, uh, under the unamended Kama. Uh, so that has always been the reality. What we've just done now is to say that, look, where there are abuses, and this is very much in accordance with the International Convention, if you look at the UK Char uh, Charities Commission and the uh, law that established it, uh, you will know that the same measures that we are now re uh, requiring uh, our, our charitable organizations in the country, that's including NGOs that deal with issues like corruption, that deal with issues like environmental product, protection, etc. Mosques, uh, churches, Islamic authorities, Christian associations, and the like, uh, that they have to live up to certain anti-money laundering uh, laws and processes 
uh, to ensure that their operations are above board and to ensure that uh, parishioners, for example, are not being taken advantage of. And so all this does is, in effect, is if there is uh, uh, you know, evidence that has been established against any charitable organization, not just churches, not just mosques, uh, that uh, indeed uh, the courts in this country uh, can establish a process uh, that would lead to a, a greater oversight of the various institutions that may have been involved in any of these types of infractions. All right. I, I, um, I, I should have mentioned this earlier. Um, or I should have actually brought this up earlier. It's easy or it's easier now from your explanation to register a business. But business registration is one thing. A business operation is a totally different thing. How does this impact on the ease of doing business in Nigeria? Thank you very much. Uh, so really, again, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this because really a lot of what we've done Yes, you look at registration, but really MSME operation is, is where the rubber hits the road. And for us, the president has been very clear that aside from all of the things that he's put in place uh, to ease the process of doing business in the country in terms of registration, uh, he's even done more uh, for those who are already in operation. So we've already automated several processes within the Corporate Affairs Commission, uh, reducing the time lag, for example, in registering a business name to under 48 hours. Now, companies who are, for example, filing their taxes can do all of it uh, very quickly, instantly online uh, with the Federal Inland Revenue Service without having to go through the interface with bureaucrats and all of that. Then, of course, in the legislature, we passed the Credit Reporting Act and the C Collateral Registry Act, allowing uh, MSMEs to use movable assets uh, as collateral I, 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 uh, to obtain loans from Ajuri, uh, financial institutions. I, Ajuri, please, hold, please hold, kindly hold so, on. Yes. What, I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to establish is, aside making it easier for businesses to start up, aside making it easier for these companies to be and these small businesses to be registered, which is beautiful, by the way, right. what I'm asking is, how about the ease of doing business in Nigeria, the Nigerian business environment? Um, how does this affect and exactly. make it better? You know, that, that's exactly what I'm explaining, is that these, these reforms across the executive branch, across the legislature, and even in the judiciary, uh, that led us to being named uh, as a top 10 and uh, most improving nation in the world, globally, uh, by the World Bank, uh, uh, two out of the last three years, uh, has to do with the reforms that I'm mentioning across the executive, legislature, and judiciary. Now, for us now, as you rightly mentioned, if you're operating a company in the country right now, uh, President Mohamedou Buhari had signed into effect in January, on January 13th, 2020, the finance bill, which has real impact on the ability of, uh, on the ease of, uh, of, of, of MSMEs uh, to conduct their operations in the country. For example, uh, it included provisions that now ensure that uh, M uh, micro and small enterprises generated between uh, one naira and 25 million naira are now fully exempted from paying company income tax. They have a 0% company income tax obligation. And even for medium enterprises who are generating annual profit of between 25 million naira and 100 million naira have seen a reduction uh, of their company income tax obligation from 30% down to 20% as a result of the uh, finance bill that was signed into law by Mr. President earlier this year. So as you rightly said, he has dealt with the issue of uh, registration and making that process easier, but he's also dealt uh, with, with operation in such a way that our MSMEs can invest the resources that would have gone to tax authorities back into their businesses, expanding their operations and employing unemployed Nigerians. And all of these measures come together to really deepen uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, you know, capacity of our uh, in, environment uh, to, to enable business in the country. And I'm sure the World Bank rankings uh, would reflect uh, the Kama Amendment and many of the other reforms that are taking place at the moment. All right. Um, of course, looking forward to seeing um, 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 those rankings come uh, through before the end of the year and even further. Let's also talk quickly about the MSMEs. In view of the harsh impact of COVID-19 on the economy, um, does the federal government have any plans for the MSMEs? Oh, absolutely. So uh, the, the, that's a major part of why uh, we put together the, uh, the Nigeria Economic Sustainability Plan. Uh, and of course, the component that deals with MSME intervention uh, really ha has to do with uh, uh, majorly a survival fund. So you recall that, uh, of course, there are particular sectors hit when you look at oil and gas, transportation, aviation, hospitality, uh, several uh, critical sectors were hit by COVID-19. 
and all of that, globally as well as uh, nationally. So for us now, uh, we are offering a, a survival fund that is essentially going to be issued uh, to about 300,000 MSMEs in the country uh, with capacity to sustain uh, 1 million jobs that would have gone into extinction as a result of the impact of COVID-19 on the economy. That's going to be very critical. Then we're also uh, bringing forward uh, a 200 billion naira zero interest uh, facility, credit facility uh, to artisans across the country because they're going to be central uh, to the implementation of the economic sustainability plan in terms of uh, construction across sectors. And then finally, I would also note uh, that we're also supplying about 600 billion naira uh, to about 2.6 million farmers nationwide uh, to be able to uh, have access to low-interest low credit facilities, almost zero-interest credit facilities, uh, to further expand their operations uh, and employ uh, more Nigerians as well. So really across the board, we're making these interventions uh, for MSMEs across the country, uh, not just to sustain existing operations, but to expand further and to create new jobs and new opportunities uh, that will last well beyond the era of COVID-19. Ajuri Ingalale, SSA to the President on Public Affairs, thank you so much for speaking with us. It's been a great privilege. Thank you for having me.